this world that we're talking about, Web 2 to Web 3, will take a little bit of time. But at the end of the day, it's about who owns the proxy on the most valuable commodity on the earth, which is the data. My name is Chris J. Snook. I'm from all over. I grew up in West Trenton, New Jersey, and I've lived in multiple states and a couple different countries over the last, we'll say, several decades. Uh, so I own and operate a digital asset venture studio, which is called Nine Level Nine. And we have several portfolio companies, some of which we have controlling interest equity in, some of which we have small slivers of equity in through advisory or related investments. And so those run the gamut right now of what I would call Web3, blockchain, AI, and arts and culture. And so we have several different projects that are taking up the majority of my focus right now. That's that's what Nine Level Nine does. We we bring we manufacture emerging technologies and grow and grow early stage technology companies and, and platforms. And that's what I've been doing for the better part of the last several years. And, and I've kind of been doing it one way or the other in one shape or the other for the last 23 years now. So I got involved in real estate. I got involved in wholesale finance. I got involved in anything where I could put people together. And so I got this like weird exposure to a lot of different industries and the way things worked. And I did some analyst work for this like little LBO firm and I was learning about finance and structured things. And I didn't have licenses in any of this stuff, but I was just scooping it all up and I would get, you know, 25 grand here and I would pay somebody back and I would, you know, get this and I would, and I was like trying to just hold on to my house. But in 08, when the whole world got reset, it was basically obvious that software was, you know, gonna be the play. and. So I, that's me. That's when I went into technology. And because I had seen, now I had the pattern recognition. Now I'm looking back and I'm going, okay, so web one or whatever internet, the, the beginning of the internet, as we call web one was about read only, right? We basically just created digital versions of the analog stuff. So when I was selling small business websites, the reason nobody wanted them was because in their mind, they're like, I have a yellow page ad. And if you remember the first websites, all it was, was basically the print ad, like on a website. Because the internet connections were slow, there was no real interactivity, hypertext protocol had just gotten invented, which allowed you to click through to things. So now we had portals like Amazon, things like that, but they were early, e-commerce was very small. And so search engines were terrible, right? Like the early search engines were horrible until Google in the early double O's, you know, invented PageRank algorithm and really started to change things. So, but I'd seen that happen. And then in like 04, 05, I kind of, the early days of social, right? MySpace and all that stuff. And then eventually Facebook perfecting it. So it's just this cyclical thing where you, you start to get better at recognizing the pattern and waves. As we've kind of learned, what Web3 is about is it's about correcting the errors of the Web2 incentive model and this advertising industrial complex that has gotten weaponized at a level that's you know really been dangerous and destructive for several decades now, or several, you know, at least for the last 10 years. What what I learned through that whole process was like to look around the corner and kind of understand the inevitable. And so you know, generically, I would say excitement is the other side of fear. And I and I bring that up because, again, trying to impart some level of wisdom. I don't know what the future holds. I'm not going to pretend like I know what the future holds. I know what the future could hold. And like everything in life, it could hold some positive outcomes. There's obviously some negative things that, you know, to worry about. And it's ultimately going to be up to us individually and collectively as humanity to figure out where that settles out. And, and so I, I get excited by that. I get excited by this, this whole event, right? Communities of common interest, people, people congregate for all their own reasons. They're all here for their own selfish reasons and they should be, but they're also part of something bigger. They're part of a future focused on what can we do with this? So that's what excites me. What's web three. Web three is where I, 
could do anything, whether it was a device, whether it was whatever, where I own the proxy or the control. I'm the one who has the ownership of my data. This world that we're talking about, Web 2 to Web 3, will take a little bit of time. But at the end of the day, it's about who owns the proxy on the most valuable commodity on the earth, which is the data. I've always enjoyed playing the drums. My father said to me when I was about 10 or 11 years old, he said, I know you love sports, Chris. At some point, you're going to be too old to play sports. Find another hobby outside of work. Find another skill that you can do until you're 70 or 80 years old. And that's drums. I like anything that's like sweet. So, you know, probably top of my head, strawberries, but watermelon's good. I like mangoes. I like guava. Yeah, I mean, I like sweet stuff.